Hi everyone, so I've just opened up the computer-based version of Canvas Workspace and this message has come up telling me that there is an update from August 2021. It says the update version is 2.6 and then the information here tells you what has been included. So they've added the fill page function, they've improved when you import DF, F files if anybody uses those. It says there's an improvement to the process overlap function and that the privacy policy has changed. <clears throat> I'm going to log in and then I've got another little note here, software update. I've got this checked so that it says always check for most recent versions at startup and I'm just going to click update. So I'm just going to walk through the steps as shown on the screen and install the program. Okay, so it says the installation was successful. I just need to close the window and then come back to my Canvas Workspace icon, which is in my taskbar and open the program. So here we are with the blank page and I'm just gonna have a look and see what this filter page function is all about. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna to come to the basic shapes and I'm just going to drag a circle onto the screen and just size it down a little bit. I'm going to come over to the edit icon and straight away now I can see under transform where you would normally use this to flip your shape vertically or horizontally. There's this duplicate um, icon now and when you hover over the little icon it says fill page. So I've just got a circle I'm just going to pop it into the corner for now out of the way and it's I've just dragged it down it's just under one and a half inches in size so I'm going to click this icon now and instantly it's filled my 12 by 12 page with all those circles so this is going to be brilliant if you want to cut you know lots of basic shapes if you're batch card making specific maybe um, you know for Christmas and you might, need, you might be needing circles to stamp on or shapes to stamp on. This is going to be brilliant. Let's see. So if we bring a circle on again, size this down. Let's go to the edit icon. Let's make this about one and a half again, something like that. And then I'm going to drag on a scallop circle. Let's make it 185 so that would nest nicely behind the circle. So I'm going to just position them close-ish together and select them both and come to fill page again and this time now it's created a, a page full of the two shapes so that's interesting as well so let's get rid of those and let's see if we can do it with text so let's type some text and Let's look for another font. Um, let's see if this is a font that I use when I'm using the pen tool. So I'll take this size down and then let's see if we can fill a page with this. So before I do anything, I'm going to change it to a draw line. And that way, when I've got a full page, hopefully, they'll all be set to draw. And I could put this into the machine and I could get the machine to draw these for me. Um, let's see if we can add a box around it and get it to cut out at the same time. So let's select them both. I'll centre them both on the horizontal and the vertical. I'll select the box and make sure that's a cut. Just go to my layers panel and choose the text and that's assigned as a draw. So if I group them and then let's go back to the edit icon and duplicate them again. And this time it's filled a page to the best of its ability with them all. So that would be also brilliant because, again, if you're batch card making or batch 
um, you know, for Christmas or birthdays, these are now all assigned as a draw and a cut. So you could fill your, I'm just using 12 by 12 here at the moment because that's the standard mat size that I use by default. But you could fill your mat. You could put a piece of 12 by 12, say white colored cardstock on your mat. Send this over to your machine, ask it to draw and it will draw all the greetings and then ask it to cut and it's going to cut them all out for you. So that's really going to be a time saver, especially for Christmas because you can put your own greeting, you might not want Happy Christmas, you might want Happy Holidays, and you might not have a stamp, or you may want it to say, from our family to yours, or anything, you could just make your own greeting, assign it as a draw line, add a shape around it, it doesn't have to be a rectangle, that was just, you know, one that I decided to grab, because the word is all on one line, um, and then hit the fill page and you've got a full page of greetings, which is brilliant. So that's good to know. So let's get rid of that. And then let me have a look at some other. Let's see if we've got anything in the rhinestone, if it works with that. So I'll just choose. That's actually quite big. So I'll let me get rid of that and look for another one. That one's okay. So again, if I... I've got one of the rhinestone designs, which is dropped into the top left hand corner. If I say fill page, so it's thinking about this one, it's probably going to take longer if it does this because there's obviously more detail within the rhinestones. But again, now it's filled the page with all the rhinestone designs. So again, if you were wanting a rhinestone design to put on, you know, different clothing and you were making several of them it just doesn't only work with text and shapes it works with the rhinestones as well so let me select all of those and hit delete i'm presuming it will do it with any of the other shapes so i'll just select one of the border shapes so it's saying for this one that the selected shape is too large unable to fill with plural pieces of shape so let's see if we can make it any smaller. Position it within the red lines. And now it will duplicate it. So it looks as though I do have to make this one a bit smaller so that it can create the correct number of duplicates to fit on this mat. So it's working with the borders. It's working with the text. It's working with the shape. It works with the rhinestones. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, vinyl auto blade. So let me choose one of the designs and I'll just size it down. And again, I'm just going to bring it just onto the mat a little bit more because the bounding box is extending beyond the red cut lines. And then again, let's see, fill page. So, so I'm going to get rid of those. Let's see what else we've got. What have we got here? Wild and free with the feather. I'm going to bring that down. So this is now about five inches wide by just under four inches high. And let's duplicate it and see again. So it's put four on the page. So let's get rid of these. I'm going to make this smaller and then do fill to page again and see what it does. So this time now I've made it smaller, it's given me more. So at that size, it looks as though possibly that's how it wants to fill the page with just maybe four shapes but now i've made it smaller i've got 12 of the shapes so it seems to be working with all the accessories but i think this function is going to be really helpful as i say especially when we need to cut lots of shapes and especially if you you know, like for matting layers, or if you use circles a lot, you could just batch cut a stack of circles and just keep them in a drawer and you've got them there then to stamp on. So I'm assuming that this is going to work with diff the different size mats as well. So if I just bring in a scallop shape again and just size it down just by eye for now, and come over here to the art board and change the size of my mat to 12 by 24 and then go back to edit and click fill page. Now it's filled a 12 by 24 mat. So let's go back to art board and custom size for tiling. So if I make this 
this is currently set to 25 inches by 25 inches. So if I make the height 30 inches and then go back to edit and filter page, now it's added an extra set on for me. So that's, that's handy to know as well. So I'm going to go back to artboard. I'm going to change my mat size back to 12 by 12 and just get rid of everything. If you use Canvas Workspace or computer, update your software to this new version 2.6 and have a play with it yourself and see if you find any additional features that I've not come across just on this initial look. So I hope that was helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.